In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Through the work of our hands and the innovation of technology, we cooperate with the Creator to improve the earth as a dwelling place of the human family. By our efforts to bring the work of creation to perfection, we contribute to the advancement of society and carry out Christ's mandate to follow Him in serving one another in love. Let us then bless God as we use this center for innovation for our advantage and never forget to offer praise to Him who is the true light and the fount of that water which springs up to eternal life. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and the darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the, fix, the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made two, the two great lights, the greater one to govern day, and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. The word of the Lord. In human works and in our innovations, we must recognize the continuing activity of God, the Creator. Rightly then, we offer praise to God with grateful hearts and call on Him with confidence, saying, Lord, sustain the work of our hands. Eternal God, you made all things good and gave them into our care. Grant that we may use gifts of knowledge and learning wisely for your glory and our own well-being. For this we pray. Lord, sustain the work of our hands. You continually give us your Holy Spirit. Grant that we may cooperate with the same Spirit for the renewal of the face of the earth, not merely through innovation and technology, but through justice and charity. For this we pray. Lord, sustain the work of our hands. We know what lies in our hearts. Grant that a desire for what is right and good will guide the use of our innovative facilities. For this we pray. Lord, sustain the work of our hands. Let us pray. Lord, God, all-powerful creator of light, source, and origin of us all, Look with kindness upon your servants who will teach and learn in this center. Grant that by continuing to seek your face, they may, after the darkness of this world, find you, the unfailing light in whom we live in love and move and have our being. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Good afternoon. It's a great honor to stand here before you today at the inauguration of the Roberto C. Goizueta Innovation Center. At a time when the COVID pandemic has paralyzed the world and has made things so challenging, this center is a testament to the voracious desire in mankind to progress and to move forward. Built in the midst of the virus outbreak when whole nations were scrambling to bring order address the issues of health and vaccines. Construction here on the Belen Jesuit campus proceeded, fueled by a solitary mission 
to enhance the learning experience of our students. Since he graduated from El Colegio de Belén in Havana, Cuba in 1949, Roberto Guaysueta was an ardent supporter of his alma mater. He never forgot the extraordinary lessons he learned at the Palace of Education and understood it laid the foundation for his enormous success. Belen and Mr. Goisueta are a lot alike. Both faced bitter adversity when a ruthless ideology forced them to leave their country of origin with empty pockets and resettle in another country only to start all over again. Exiled, both had to work hard to build themselves back up again and not allow anger or hate to blind their motivation. I believe that it was also an awareness of this shared experience that motivated Roberto Guaysueta to give back to Belen. Filled with one of the greatest virtues of all, gratitude, he has been one of our greatest and most faithful benefactors. Even after death, knowing how important Belen was to him, his family and foundation have continued to support the mission of the school. This innovation space we find ourselves in today is just one more expression of Roberto Guaysueta's commitment to education, and in particular, of Belen education. In 1996, he generously donated the necessary funds for the construction of the gym. Being not only a scholar, but an athlete as well, Mr. Guaysueta understood the importance of forming the whole man. It was only appropriate when the Goisueta Foundation awarded us the necessary funds for the construction of the Innovation Center, that it would be located in the same building that already bore his name. On behalf of the Jesuit priests, the whole Belen Jesuit community, and especially the students, I want to say thank you to the late Roberto and Olga Goisueta, to their children, and to the Roberto C. Goisueta Foundation.